Hey folks, today we'll be going over a quick functional drawing of the cervical plexus. This plexus is formed by the anterior rami of cervical spinal nerves C1 to 5, so we'll start with those. From C3, 4, and 5, we'll draw the phrenic nerve, passing inferiorly. This goes to the diaphragm, so remember this by the rhyme 3, 4, and 5 keeps the diaphragm alive. Next, we'll take C2 and 3 and turn them into a nice loop that reaches all the way back up to C1. This nerve loop is called the ansa cervicalis. There will be four motor nerves coming off of this loop. The superior most is the nerve to the belly of the superior omohyoid muscle. The inferior most is the nerve to the inferior omohyoid belly. The two nerves that will come off between these two nerves are the sternoinfrahyoid muscles, the sternohyoid and the sternothyroid. That's three of our four infrahyoid muscles supplied now. If we have a muscle from the sternum to the thyroid cartilage and a muscle from the sternum to the hyoid bone, then the one that we must be missing is the one that completes this triangle, a muscle going from the thyroid cartilage to the hyoid bone. This is powered by the thyrohyoid nerve. So we've done our infrahyoids, now there's only the suprahyoids. All suprahyoids are supplied by cranial nerves, save one supplied by the cervical plexus, that is the geniohyoid nerve. Now we've drawn all of the motor nerves of the plexus, so this is a good time to detail the association of the plexus to the cranial nerves. Cranial nerve 12 does not communicate, it does not enter the cervical plexus, but the geniohyoid and thyrohyoid both run within its sheath, so we're going to draw it swooping in close and then moving away from the plexus. Next we'll draw cranial nerve 11, the accessory nerve, which receives spinal contributions from C2, 3 and 4. Next we'll have the sensory nerves, and the first to consider is the transverse cervical nerves, going across the plexus from C2 and C3. We've went across, so now let's go down with the supraclavicular nerves from C3 and 4. And finally, after having gone across and down, we need to provide sensation above. We'll do this with the greater auricular and the lesser occipital nerves. Now I'm drawing the lesser occipital nerve coming off of both C2 and 3, but do be aware that some uh, literature cites it as only coming off C2. And that's us. I hope this clears things up for you. See you next time, folks.